me that the driver seems to be getting caught out there, including yourself. What's happening? The deterioration of the stage from the first run to the second run on that first stage. Now that in the morning that stage was absolutely beautiful, bone dry, actually in much better condition than the second stage. And this time, all the tight corners have deteriorated completely. A lot of gravel on the road, a lot of loose stones, and a lot of weight. And people are pushing very hard on slick tyres, and they're getting cut out in the tight corners. Pat, you're going to need a bit of body work after this event. We are indeed, yeah, there was some stuff out on the road that wasn't there the first time through and we hit it, it just went straight off into a tree. But um, we had a misfire on the last stage and the car cut out on the stage or slowed down and, and we lost a lot of time, a bit of an overshoot as well, so not going well. How has the rally been going so far up until now? Well, uh, fine, except there was an incident there in stage three, which uh, in, a, in a long career I've rarely seen what, the, the, like what happened there, where you came halfway around the corner and somebody has turned water across the road and there's a gang of idiots up on the fence having a big laugh at, I'd say, most competitors crashing their cars against it, which is really disgusting to see in a sport. Stages five and six are based around Greg Namana. And as we have learned, careless spectators who vandalise stage three may have put competitors' lives in grave danger. True rally followers don't behave this way. Pat Donegan's car goes to show how lucky he is to be still in the rally. But he's not finished exciting Lisa Rowe yet, but this time it's on his side. So through farm into square left, 60. The face of concentration shows how Tommy Randalls is going to attack the next loop of stages, and with only seven seconds in hand, it's maximum attack. Into bed, sharp jump, 16. Pass left and pass right over small crest 80. It's an absolute crest. Camillus Bradley isn't finished yet and he has a point to prove. His neat style of driving means you can stay on the pace and out of trouble. David James is still on the pace and Jim Crow pushes him on. It's a flat left long. It's a caution right through him across. Don't touch. 50. Don't touch. Mind the dust. Yeah. Flash white. The flash white over crest. Tommy Kiley is applying for a job in the council. He wants to clear the verges to make the roads wider. <laughs> Billy Colmel still presses on, but to no avail. This car is doing the driver no justice as he lies sixth, so retirement beckons. 20. Right over bridge, bump, square left. 70. Fast left. Billy, unfortunate that the day has come to close for you. Yeah, we just couldn't uh, seem to find what, what is wrong on this engine, and uh, there, there wasn't the whole point in continuing, really. We were being caught up by the people from behind, and there was delaying them as well, so it wasn't fair, you know. But um, yeah, we might have another outing, hopefully sometime. The Widgey brothers take the long way around this bend using the bales thinking they're at an auto test. The Condrans who are quick and clean around their local stage. Brian Lawler and Peter Capita were having a good run on the tar until the car let them down with a bang. And with just three wheels left, it's game over. Jason Dooley lets it all hang out in enjoying this Mark II challenge, except for the odd mistake. Fellow collar men, the Carrolls, are also having a brilliant drive, and who knows, they may even buy a Mark II Escort. Tongues hang out with driving like this and Welsh crew Ian Davies and Earl Evans can't resist coming to Ireland for some real escort rally. But unfortunately, they're taking an early boat home when they retire here.
Nigel, you've been putting tyres on Mark to Esquist now for over 25 years, so you would have supplied the likes of Billy Coleman. When they came to you and asked for a set of tyres, what were they looking for for each event? Usually, in those days, it was a standard tyre, all-weather tyre, and we would have fitted up the standard one for the particular car. And generally, for the rallies like we have here this weekend, one set of tyres, the man went away happy, finished his rally. People are now interested in getting from A to B quicker than the competitor. So they are using softer and softer compounds that result in tyres probably doing two stages and the tyres worn out. Whereas in the Billy Coleman, the Jerry Buckley days of the Mark II, they were more interested in getting mileage from the tyres. On the final few miles and no dramas from Graeme Scallon and Brendan Cullimore, who finished an incredible 10th overall. Michael Curran and Keane Curley are lucky to get through this event as they were having trouble with a sticky throttle, but 9th overall is a good result for them. Keeping the spectators entertained is David Condal, who keeps his local fans amused with his sideways style and secures 8th place. Brian Carroll doesn't lift for this bend and charges out of trouble to bring his Mark II home in seventh. The Widgey brothers have nothing to prove but have an excellent drive, taking their class by over five minutes to claim sixth in this Mark II challenge. Jason Dooley, who was fifth overall, shows us some vintage escort driving at this junction. Just enough gravel for just enough broadside. Pat Donegan is standing in his escort and is committed enough to be in fourth position by one second, wringing every ounce of power out of his Mount Tune engine. A push start is a bad start for David James, but when he has his car on song, he doesn't disappoint, securing a comfortable third place. Camillus Bradley is back up the leaderboard, second overall, a great result for this Mark II preparation specialist. After a dramatic event, it's a triumph for Tommy Randalls and Dermot Lynch to still be in the rally, let alone winning it. And after all the excitement, that's exactly what they do, taking the Mark II crown back to the Kingdom of Kerry. Tommy, by the looks of the car, it wasn't an easy run for you, but did you enjoy this event? Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, the stages were beautiful. We got cut out in a, in a key right, and we have a little bit of body damage, but other than that, we were setting the pace on most of the stages for, for the day, and it was a beautiful rally with lovely stages. We really enjoyed it, yeah. A great achievement for Carlo Car Club, who organised this first ever Mark II Challenge. And with the response from the thousands of spectators, the Mark II is definitely not a thing of the past. And the final results of the Mark II Challenge. A first ever win for Tommy Randalls and Dermot Lynch, followed by Camillus Bradley, David James and Pat Donegan. Next week we bring you round three and four of the Group N Dunlop National Rally Championship. Don't miss all the action, right here. OK, so the aerodynamics of a shoebox may be, but very handy if you've got loads of stuff to lug about. Trucks 3 is tomorrow at half nine. Next tonight, close shaves that even Mr Gillette would be proud of. And they walked away is in just a sec.